Hello, everyone. My name is Florence Pina, and I'm head of data intelligence and AI at Talent. I'm delighted to introduce our esteemed speaker for today for our technical talk on the Global AI Hackathon with Social Impact, organized by Talent. Our speaker, Lautaro Jesueli, is a distinguished figure in the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Lautaro boosts a wealth of experience and knowledge in this field. Currently, he holds the position of Senior Machine Learning Engineer at Mercado Libre, where he has made a significant contributions for over two years, helping to drive advancements in AA and technology within the company. In addition to his professional roles at Mercado Libre and Millon, Lautaro brings a rich history of expertise. Prior to his current position, he served as an AA and automation engineer for more than three years at Banco Galicia, where he played a pivotal role in shaping the bank's AI initiatives. Alongside his professional endeavors, Lautaro is deeply committed with education. He serves as a professor of computer organization and architecture at Wade University, and he also holds the role of an assistant teacher in parallel and distributed systems at La Plata University. His educational background is encored by his engineer degree in computer engineering, underscoring his solid academic foundation in this field. Today, he will share his insight on retrieval augmented generation during his knowledge large language models, a topic of immense importance and relevance in the dynamic world of artificial intelligence. Please join me in this extending and extending a warm welcome to Lautaro as he takes the virtual stage to enlighten us with his knowledge and experience in the realm of AA and machine learning. Welcome, Lautaro. How are you? Thanks for showing us. Hi, Florence. Hi, Florencia. Thank you for having me. How are you? Very good. Thank you. I know that you are showing us, you showing us from Argentina, right? How's the weather there? Yes, the weather is perfect, but if I had the possibility to stay on Malaga's beaches, I would prefer that. Oh, I imagine that for sure. Okay, well, Lautaro, hope you can come soon. But now I think that we have an audience that it's really interesting in the talk that you are going to share with us. So what do you think of moving to that? Oh, perfect. Great. Let me share. I know that you have prepared some slides, so let me share the slides with the audience. And um, it's all yours. We are going to learn a lot today. Oh, thank you, Fleur. Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to introduce you to Retrieval augmented Generation, or RA, to help large language model to be more updated and accurate. I am going to introduce you in this method or paradigm, and then I am going to talk or tell you about retrieval, sparse and dense retrieval using embeddings. And finally, we are going to speak about re-rank and some conclusion about that. And to start, a rank paradigm is for me by two main components a search and a generator. We will start with the boss, the, this box, uh, that refers to model that can generate text in response to a user query, such as transformer or large language model. These models are trained in a vast amount of data and have the capability to predict the next token. But what challenge do the large language model have? We lack sources for fact checking and the data may be updated. So with retrieval amended, we're adding a memory to our process or pipeline and this memory 
could be a collection of documents or a collection of video or whatever. And in this step, the pipeline, first of all, is going to retrieve information that is relevant to what the user query was, in this case. And the prompt now has three parts, the interaction, the query, and the retrieve content together with the user query question. So a generative, in this case, a generative model empowered by search. In this slide, we can see the RA introduces method that combined information retrieval and text generation capability to supply additional context to the large language model without having to retrain or fine tune the large language model on the external knowledge base. Providing high quality data, in this case, to large language model through retriever, improve the quality of the response improve the performance, reducing the likelihood of generating incorrect or hallucinated information. In this case, we, we can choose between two options, fine tuning or raw. Fine tuning is to get better at specific tasks. If you want to have your large language model perform a certain task or give a certain style of response, for example, the tone of a blog article, fine tuning is designed for that. Um, in this case, evaluations to measure the performance is for fine tuning over a model. So search, in this case, or retriever can help large language model in multiple ways, factual information to reduce hallucination. You can add private information to your large language model, have updated information, and um, add explanation or citations. In in this slide, we can see a, an example of the Clima Q and Answer Retriever specific uh, passage from the scientific report to help answer your question accurately. In this case, we have a, a database with extensive scientific report, and you can search in this space and to enrich your prompt with relevant context, and then pass that to the generator, to the landlord with model or the transformer model that you have here as a generator, and you have a more accuracy response and interpretability. Um, okay. In, in in that of having to retrain the large language model, if a piece of new information can up in this, in this example, for example, for example, new data related to the climate, all we have to do is amend our data store with a new or updated data. And in fact, now being able to give evidence with our services. If the user question cannot be reliably answered based on your data store, the model should say, I don't know, instead of making up something that is believable and may mislead the user. So if we don't have the, the answer for this query, we can say, I don't know, instead of uh, produce hallucination. The search 
is integrated by a retriever and a re-ranker, and the generator could be a large language model or transformer model to generate the response. This method was introduced by Lewis in this paper in 2021, and you can appreciate that the paper defined the three components that I introduced before, the retriever, the document index, and the generator to uh, generate the right response. In this slide, you can appreciate that it's way too important to split in document. The indexing process involves uh, breaking down document in small chunks. A, a crucial step is in model have a token limit. Um, so you have to gather all the documents you want, your large language model to use, and divide this document into chunks, as you can appreciate here. The, the chosen strategy can vary depending on the specific task at hand. For example, with article, you may choose to split them into sentences or paragraph. On the other hand, for marketplace uh, content, splitting by review could be a more suitable approach. Here you can see uh, the input, the query, and we will have a large collection of document in, uh, in chunks. And as the output, we have the, the prompt plus the, the context and a, a top of the best document that we search in this part. And then we can rerun that to uh, enrich our prompt with the relevant context that we want. Now, I am going to talk about Spark Retrieval using keyword search. A high level look at how keyword search works is to compare how many words are in common between the query and the document that we have in Chan. As you can see in this example, who is the president of the United States, we retrieve two items, the item zero and the item one. Uh, we match the, the words that we have in the database or in the different chunks. BM21 algorithm is commonly used and it is called the document versus the query based on a specific formula that looks at the count of the shared words between the query and each document. Spare retrieval, in, in, in this approach, each word has its own dimension. For example, President of the United States, you had a a one in this part of the vector, president, is zero for the, for the different word of the vocabulary that you frame the model, and one in here for the United States. The, the issues using this type of retrieval is the lexical, lexical gap. For example, the US is different to United States, or Apple is different to Apple in this case. But the advantage are that this uh, type of retrieval is fast and uh, small. Yes. And you don't need 
uh, data to train that. Another approach is use dense retrieval using embeddings that I will speak about that in the next slide. Embeddings, the embedding maps text, image, video, and whatever to a low dimensional dense vector space. You have to encode document from some external knowledge base, for example, Wikipedia or your databases for a given query you 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 will pass the chunk in the embedding model you you will get a, a vector of load with different dimension depending of the of the embedding model and then you you will find in the space for the similar document related to the query. For a given query, find the top K most relevant documents. In, in this example, we can see who is the president of the United States. We can compare with um, its birth retrieval. And in this case, the, the retrieve document are more related or more semantic related uh, with, a, with a question or with a, with a query. So an embedding model in, in code your query, your relevant document in a vector of a, a specific dimension, dimension depending of the type of model that you use. And then we have another component, a semantic search to, to search in the, in the space the related document. This type of model allow us to, to have similar text close in the space. Semantically similar depends on the task that you are or you have. Um, this type of approach, this type of um, way of encode your document can overcome the lexical gap and respect the word orders. The issues for this type of model are when we don't know the word or when you train the model and then you can you you want to infer the with word that you unknown or the model unknown. One major way to improve your RAC system is to fine tune your embedding model. You can frame the retriever too. The goal of this model is to minim minimize the distance between pairs or semantic the pairs of semantically similar sentences and maximize the distance between sentence pairs that are semantically distant. So we can train this, this model. In this slide, we can see a bi encoder model. We can train that using a multiple brand loss. And you can frame that with a anchor and a positive passage. For example, if you have a paper title and inside the paper title or question and answer, you can train with that, with, a, with an anchor and a positive passage. In, as I mentioned, in this slide, we can see as we can train or fine tune um, 
a bi-encoder model using multi-ranking loss. There are a lot of embedding models, for example, as I mentioned, by encoder, and there are a lot of uh, available, a lot of a lot of uh, service that you can use to to get embeddings. For example, Cohere, uh, Cohere has an AP to to get embeddings. Uh, to get embedding of the query or to get embedding of the different chunks. Um, also, OpenAI has uh, they has uh, some API to to get embedding model. In this case, we have a massive text embedding benchmark. You can check out the uh, lead board on High Infay Hub, and you can see the performance of different sentence transformer or embedding model depending on the different tasks. For example, classification, retrieval, re-ranking, and for example, clustering. So I highly recommend to check in this lead board the difference available model um, they performed in different tasks. On the other hand, apart of the embedded model, we need a semantic search to search in the space the, the neighbors of the, the query. And you can use approximate nearest neighbor as a library we have different library available, for example, Face by Facebook, Annoying, and ScanNN. And they are available a lot of uh, vector database to, to store the embedding and then uh, search in the database the more closer the neighbor for a specific query. So, if you want to implement a dense retrieval, we need both. An embedding model, you can fine tune that, and a semantic search to find the, uh, the best uh, chunks or document or passage. As you can see in this slide, we can use a retrieval, a spark retrieval, or death retrieval, or in some cases, both, depending on, on the task. And you can adapt, adapt this type of model to your domain or your task. Finally, I'll talk about rerank. Rerank is a way for model to sort search result from best to worst based on the relevance they have with respect to the query. As you can see, the, this phishing example explains the concept of curve grain retrieval. Phishing net is equal to vector search, then retrievals or sparse retrieval as BM25, and a manual is a inspection of the fish is equal to the fisherman to their ranking model. We have a lot of models to sorry, we have a lot of model to rerun. For example, we can use a Colbert or you can use a cross encoder model, or you can use large language model to rerun your candidate 
and choose the better to then enrich your prompts. And finally, there are a lot of re-ranker uh, component to add to your pipeline. For example, loss in the middle ranker. The loss in the middle ranker at times places the best document at the beginning and an end of the content window or the, the prompt, making it easy for the large language model attention to access and use them. As you can see in this, in this paper, Large language model struggle to focus on relevant passage in the middle of a long context. So using T ranker, you put some document at the beginning and some document at the end. And then we pass the best retrieval document and rerun document or context to with your prompt to the generator, transformer, or large language model to get the best response here. Finally, is we, we can talk about some conclusion. Of course, is implement this type of systems or pipeline is a trade-off of mem between memory, speed, and quality. And of course, the cost is involved in this case. First one, the quality. The second one, the speed. If we, if we add more components in our pipeline, the, the latency is increasing. Um, it's the similar with a moment with a memory usage for the model index, etc. How to implement this type of pipeline? There, there are available some end-to-end -end pipeline. For example, you can check out uh, the writer component or the last week was released ARCE that allowed you to implement an end-to-end -end RAC uh, pipeline, including um, then retrieval adapted to your domain, to a domain and a large language model, and you can find tune as well the large language model. Um, also, there are available frameworks to build a retrieval augmented generative AI system. For example, Langchain, JAMA Index, and Haystack. Thank wow. you for learning more about RAM. Wow, what a fascinating topic. We have gained a lot of uh, valuable insights in retrieval augmentation generation and its relevance to the large, to the large language models, right? As we bring this session to a close, uh, I want to thank, uh, to express my sincere gratitude to our estimated speaker, Lautaro, uh, for sharing his profound insights and experience in this world of artificial intelligence and machine learning. His experience and dedication to advance, uh, to advancing the, the, the field are truly inspiring. Audience, Thank you for your valuable time and enthusiastic participation. As the AAA hackathon continues and more talks unfold, we encourage you to savor the experience. At this event, we uh, will spring of inspiration as you explore, collaborate, and excel. 
have a fantastic time at the hackathon and may it fuel your passion for innovation. Thanks for it. Thanks to everyone.